What's up, everybody? My name is Jason, and welcome to Breaking News. Within the last hour, Senate EIDL bombshell must watch. It is Wednesday, August the 10th, 2022. I need you to do me a huge favor. Give this video a thumbs up, hashtag EIDL with your comments below. And yes, if you got a small business or a side hustle, be sure to join us at trysmallbiz.com. I can not only help you make money in the stock market, we've 12X'd at Twitter, at Try Small Biz, but I can help grow your small business or your side hustle. TrySmallBiz.com, and we have 124 premium memberships, $1 a day. Make sure you get one tonight. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to read out loud for you. A major senator's office has responded with respect to EIDL. We're going to unpack this, baby, and there's good and bad, so I'm going to ask everybody one more time, give this a thumbs up, share it all over the internet, every social network you're on, and wait, wait, wait until I finish reading the email out loud before you respond with your comments. With that said, let us once again review what has happened in the past week and a half. Last Tuesday, Patrick Kelly, under oath, testified in front of the Senate Committee for Small Biz hosted by Big Ben Cardin, that there were 125,000 obligated idle loan increase applications just sitting there. And we learned from them, as well as Miss Isabel Guzman, that there's something called $800 million of idle subsidies that leverages up to $7 billion of loans. Under oath, Patrick Kelly... Seven billion dollars just waiting for you to come and say, give me my closing docs, sign and drive. Then, and I'll pin that in the top comment, also, Alex Contreras did a webinar last week, also pinned in the top comment, with Ryder over at Skip. And he confirmed, among other things, that there are, in fact, 125,000 obligated idle loan applications just sitting there. And in Alex's words, the money's not going anywhere. But as we all know, for the last week now, if you call the toll-free number, 833-something at the SBA, and you say, hi, I'd like to find out if I'm one of the 125,000 obligated EIDL loan applications. They can't tell you a damn thing. In fact, all they say is the money's been exhausted and the program is over. In other words, you're shit out of luck. So with that said, pull up a chair. If you haven't already, grab yourself a cup of coffee, ice cold beer, glass of wine, whiskey on a big rock. You might need it. Here we go. Bit of a different intro there, but this is live and in color, ladies and gentlemen. Never any edits, straight from the heart. All right. There is a small business owner in Diane Feinstein's district out in California. He or she had $798,000 of idle loan increase on the line. However, like many of you that are watching, and again, wait until I finish this story, this particular person, initially when they were offered the $798,000 idle loan increase many, many months ago, didn't take it. Why? Their business was doing rather well. But it was always there. But this person, like many of you watching right now, decided, you know what? I am going to take the idle loan increase. And because we were all told that you had to get in, Ben Cardin, are you listening? By Friday, May the 6th deadline, this person said, I'll take the $798,000. Only to be declined. And this person says to me, and I quote in an email I just received in the last hour, and then I'll read to you the senator's response to this, which again, includes good and one really bad line in it. Actually, let me rephrase that. A number of really bad lines, but one really good one that's going to apply to a large number of you. All right. Quote, and this is from the small business owner. I was approved. For $798,000, didn't want to overextend my business, etc. So I was declined for what's called failure to accept or continue the process. Many of you, right? 
Some of you got emails saying, oh, we've removed your application because you declined it or you didn't respond. You didn't show any lack of fucking interest. Well, I have a right to wait until I want to apply for the loan. Wasn't it supposed to be six or nine months? But anyway, this person didn't wait more than a month or two. Got in again, Ben Carden, Jackie Rosen, Gene Shaheen. Are you listening before the Friday, uh, Chris Van Holland, the Friday, May 6th deadline and said, I want my money. But she gets an email back saying that she's denied for failure to accept or continue the process. She says, I have a, a clean file, or he says, I have a clean file. Taxes are done, good credit, etc. When I changed my mind and submitted the application before the deadline in early May, I then went into what's called a non-obligated group, and you know the rest of the story from there. What a mess. I'm not the only one. She goes on to tell me, yeah, it's a girl. I've already slipped up. It's a girl. It's a girl, Ma. It's a girl. I know. I know. I tried to keep it a secret, but it's a girl. But the 798 is for real. There's other people. There's stories of this on Reddit. So once again, before I read the senator's response and their office out loud, everybody, please refrain from going ballistic because there is one thing in here that's a sliver of hope. All right. With that said, from Senator Dianne Feinstein's office. Now, I'm not going to read or share with you the name of the person. You're going to discover that the email is well written. It's very courteous. There is some bad info in it. And there's some good info in it. And by the way, have you given it a thumbs up and shared it everywhere? Are you signing up at trysmallbiz.com $1 a day? You want me taking these motherfuckers to court if necessary? I need your support at Try Small Biz. Quote, hello. This is the senator's office. We appreciate your continued persistence. Don't you find that interesting? Through this process. Our office remains committed to assist you where we can as we continue to advocate for you on your behalf. Okay, fair enough. We appreciate that, Ms. Feinstein. However, brace yourself. As the situation stands at the moment, at the moment, it is our burden to relay to you that the idle program has ended. Same thing customer service is telling you. Citing, quote, the Anti-Deficiency Act in the Small Business Administration. I've been doing this two years. I've never heard that before. Shout out to Ryder over at Skip and the Great Speak and See. You ever heard that? Citing the Anti-Deficiency Act at the Small Business Administration. Never heard that before. Boy, are we going to get to the bottom of that. Is denying all unfunded EIDL applications without exception. Even if the EIDL applications were submitted before May 6th, and she did so, as we were all told of this year, I continue, quote, this present situation could not be overturned by our office, end quote. Now, here comes the good news. And it is good news for a lot of you, but I want to pause for a second before I share it with you and say, holy shit, right? Holy shit, right? We were told, get in by Friday, May 6th. If you're qualified, you got a decent credit score, you got your taxes done, etc. you're going to get your money. Then we had to hear Alex and Patrick, his boss, say there's 125,000 obligated files, $7 billion just sitting there. But here's a woman, and by the way, she's got over a 750 credit score, who was offered $798,000, very solid business, initially didn't take it, but then went back and said, before the deadline, I'd like to take the money. Nope, Anti-Deficiency Small Business Act? What the fuck is that? But here comes the good news. Quote, our office, Diane Feinstein, let us not forget, has to apply to just every, absolutely every senator in this country, could only provide you assistance if your application has reached, quote, the obligating stage. Not obligated, obligating. In my opinion, this is obligating. You offered me, this woman, $798,000 months ago. She initially left the application there. They gave her the bullshit email that she wasn't interested. She went back and said, I'll take the money before May the 6th. No problems with her application because again, she was already approved. She was already approved. In case you can't fucking hear me, Ben Cardin, she was already approved. And then all of a sudden, 
the money is no longer there under something that's called the Anti-Deficiency Act at the SBA. I go on, ladies and gentlemen, and please hold your thoughts. We don't edit around here. Just lost my... <sighs> we don't edit around here. I know, I know, right? Boy, this is a... Uh... This is interesting. Most people would edit that out. What was that, 20 seconds? I don't edit. The reason why bleep, bloopers, bleepers, blooper, that's all, folks. Bloopers are so important and, and well-loved and respected by the moviegoers community because they want to see their stars like myself, of course, right? Make a mistake. So we leave that shit in. But it goes on to say, if your idle request has not already been funded, our must, office must relay that they're out of money. Please be aware that we're still working on it. We hope that you'll look into other sources of income, loans, etc. at the SBA, blah, blah, blah. So here's the deal. And no, I'm not doing this video again. The good news is that line that says, our office could only provide you assistance if you had an application that had reached the obligating stage. So if it's me, I'm calling my senators. I'm saying I was in the queue, I was in the obligating or obligated stage, but once again, and then ask him to give you some help and report back to me, this ain't over, we're gonna be fucking scorched earth for two more weeks, but my question to Miss Guzman, Patrick Kelly, Ben Cardin and others once again, and they'll be tagged in this video and I'm calling and emailing them again tomorrow with a copy of this one. Who are the 125,000? Why hasn't the customer service been armed with the ability to tell people that call who the fuck is in line to get their money? Because this woman right here with a 750 credit score that was offered 798,000 months ago that initially left it there, but then went back and said, I'll take the money. She's not obligating. She's not obligated. I, that, I do that say bullshit. And that's why, in case you haven't heard me all week, I am considering bringing the largest class action lawsuit in SBA history. And it's because of people like this and many of you watching out there that got in before the deadline. And for whatever reason, we have to now uh, swallow the Anti-Deficiency Act at the SBA when those motherfuckers said $7 billion of idle loans are obligated sitting there just waiting to be collected. So until next time, now you can tell me what you think in the comments below. And a most interesting video including 20 seconds of dead air always remember that i love you and we're gonna get this money for you thank you so much for watching